All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Connor from Out of Work. Today, I'm going to show you my DIY that I've been doing for, I think, three or four years now. But I haven't really been sharing all the secrets of it. So, uh, back when the Hydra first came out, this is before TH Marine Bottom, uh, I thought it was a pretty cool idea. What's not to like about it, right? You pay, play these fish feeding sounds, and it should stimulate the fish into feeding, or at least maybe change their mood, okay? And I've experienced uh, this quite a bit where uh, if you run the Hydra wave, you do get bit a little bit more often, but you have to know how to use it. So I've been running it for about three years now, and I can tell you when I do use it, okay? So when I do use it is when, say, the conditions are hard or someone's fished an area and I'm coming in behind them or I'm vertical dropping on some fish, things like that. I'll turn the hydro wave off just to keep the schools of fish kind of kind of fired up, you know? So that's when I use it. Does it work? Yes. Does it not work? Yes, it doesn't work also. Just because you have it does not mean fish are going to bite. I think uh, your best approach to this problem is use it as a tool to potentially change the mood of the fish. And I've also seen it when the fish are blitzing and you turn this thing on, it shuts the schools off. So, you know, it kind of varies from day to day. It's just like picking crankbaits versus swim baits type, type problem. Based on the day, the fish will behave differently. And so with that being said, you kind of have to, uh, you know, play it by ear is uh, what I would say. And you kind of have to uh, use your own experience, in a sense, to know how to use it. So like I said, I gave you a couple key ones. Like I usually turn it on when I'm power fishing, fishing behind people. Uh, or, or say like the first pass I go through, I don't turn it on. Second pass, I'll turn it on. Third pass, I'll turn it off. So one of those things... You want to keep the fish kind of guessing, and this is another real good tool. So let me show you what I got. What I got is a Duravac, 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 the swimming pool speaker. And I'm pretty sure the Hydrowave speakers, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Hydrowave speakers built by the same company. I think I paid like $75 off of eBay for it. But anyways, uh, all the links, all the links on where you can buy this, check the video description. I have links out there where you can buy it. Buy the exact one too because there are different models of speakers. So this is one, this one's kind of cool. This one fires off on on all three, four sides. I believe the Hydrowave one only goes one way. So if you if you could buy it, you could buy that one, you could buy the four-way. I bought the four-way because I figured it's gonna be installed in my kayak. I need sound and go everywhere not just in one direction i wanted to go everywhere so that is the underwater speaker from duravac and this is the piley i think that's how you pronounce it piley hydra it is a waterproof amplifier and what it does is basically it takes music and power and sends it to the uh uh the speaker over here it's waterproof it's bluetooth connection but you could choose Bluetooth or it's still supplied with the traditional headphone jack. I ran, I ran this pile uh, amplifier for the longest time. Um, runs pretty good. On my Pro Angler, I don't have the Bluetooth version. Bluetooth is actually fairly new. I think it came out with it uh, about a year ago. And then I ran uh, just straight three millimeter headphone jacks to it. And I played the music off a generic mp3 player that i got off of, off of amazon which i'll show you later well i'll show you, show you the link down there also but i don't have the mp3 on player on me right now it's actually my brother's house which is also in my pro angler but the next best thing is this is the version that i think i would recommend anyways is the upgraded version the version with the bluetooth bluetooth connections so here's my iphone you can use with any other phone you want yeah so basically how it works is you have these music files. Hope you guys see all that. And basically, on a hydrowave, you get to pick the pattern that you want, and you can pick a delay. So for me, I don't have that capability, so I've actually edited these files. So you have feeding frenzy, 30, the, the first number is how long the music will play, and then it goes to delay. So for example, this one will be feeding frenzy, 60 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And you can control the volume from your phone. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so you use your phone, you use your phone to Bluetooth over to the amplifier, and the amplifier will then use the underwater speaker to broadcast your sounds. Of course, I got more than one sound. I got going blitz as well. Let's do the 3030. Like I said, I edited these videos, edited these uh, audio files. Okay, just so you guys I'm not messing around, try to play some new music that is not uh that is not copyrighted. Play this. Alright, that's not copyrighted. Show you guys have I've got it wired up because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get that question. So how I got it wired up is all right. Let's go with a quick install here. So as you can see, the uh, speaker's down there. It's just kind of sitting down there. It's not bolted down there or anything, but it is a tight fit. It doesn't feel like it's gonna be moving around much because it's a big speaker and it's a little small area down there. Uh, this uh, bracket plate here. This is what Hobie uses to uh, pull the uh, transducer plate up and down on the bottom. We're not actually going to use it, so we're just going to keep it where it's at. And here's a cable that comes out and goes into this Hobie connector or interface. And we did use a uh, one of their grommets here, uh, but I have a two two hole grommet, which is not per is not good. I'll have to uh, I have to put some silicon or something on it to help seal it. But that's about it, man. The other end, I've actually cut down a lot shorter, just so I don't have to run the that much wire. I don't need it. I only need it to go maybe like five feet, and it should connect once again to these wires. I'll have this installed on that end inside the kayak above the water line as high as I can go, and uh, that should be it. So, well, let me try to do that be right back all right let's go over the final wiring um just to make sure everybody's on the same page so you have your amplifier and you have power coming in this is power coming in from the breaker and i'm using the uh, uh watertight uh, heat shrink here and well watertight butt connector heat shrink i'll have the uh, links down below on where you can go find them buy it online it's so much cheaper than it versus buying it at the auto parts store I think auto parts store charges you like six bucks for ten of them, but if you buy it online, I think for ten bucks you get like fifty. So buy it online. You got the links. Just click on that. It'll go to one of the more popular sites and you can get them. And buy them. Buy a lot of them too because uh, you'll you'll thank me later because if you do a lot of wiring in at least in the marine world or in, even in general anything around water, that's a must-have for a connector. So I I did that. I tied the red and the both of these are power wires um the red is the main power and the blue is your on and off switch so i actually am not using an on off switch so i've just pretty much just tied that to power and i'm using my breaker to turn this system on and off okay and the other end would be a uh, speaker so this is strong enough to power two speaker uh, system it's a two channel system but we're not using uh, the second speaker so we're just probably just gonna Put some electrical tape on them and just tuck them away or cut them and you know or tuck them away probably just tuck them away somehow and try to keep that watertight so i might spray some type of a sealer or some uh, sealant like some i don't know bathroom sealant put that in there 
because we're not going to use that. We're never going to use that ever. Uh, and this is where we make up for the uh, wiring connector. Um, this is the same heat shrink tubing. It's just the red version, which means it's a smaller size. This goes from, uh, I believe it was 16 to 22. Yeah, it even says it right there, 22 to 16 EWG. Uh, so that's what we're using. It's still got to uh, apply some heat to it to shrink it in. But the reason why you want these uh, connectors is because um, it's a butt connector. It's easy to install. And then on top of that, when you heat shrink it, there's this ooze that comes out and just completely seals it so it's watertight. Water will never get in it. So all my projects I ever do, I use these types of connectors. Okay, so that's on the incoming and outgoing. On the other side, you'll have a connector right here it's for your left and right channels you know if you have a boat or if you had actually a stereo or something you could actually plug it with that but they do also supply those adapter wire so on my pro angler uh this is how i had it wired right this is exactly how my pro angler was wired i did it this way and then i ran a uh a microphone no, not my microphone uh yeah you can say microphone or it's a three mil i believe it's three millimeter uh double-ended uh, connector it runs from that and it goes to my mp3 player so i have that installed over there and on my pro angler i stuck i brought the wire in from here and i stuck it in for just from the side and there's a little cutter and it just dangles here inside the uh storage box here. and i have my uh, cheap amazon or ebay mp3 player you know, it's like ten dollars or something like that it'll just hang in here it'll play the same the same song basically uh the same hydrowave songs but on this one, since this is the upgraded version, it's got Bluetooth. I'm going to do it via Bluetooth. I'll still have this in there just as a backup in case Bluetooth for some reason doesn't want to work that day. Uh, or if you, or, or, or in some cases, I might have a dedicated MP3 player over there. If I have a dedicated MP3 player, then there's pros and cons with a dedicated MP3 player. So the dedicated MP3 player, you, you'll either have to run power to it or you have to keep it charged. Uh, with the phone, you have your phone, so you're always it's always gonna be charged. But the way I can't turn it on and off currently, the way I want to turn it on and off, but without losing the Bluetooth connection. So if I had to do it with the regular fo uh, phone with the Bluetooth connection, every time I try to turn the hydrate on and off, I would have to reconnect. I would have to press play again. Now with the MP3 player, you basically just uh, flip the breaker and it shuts off the system the mp3 player still plays because it doesn't know so it could, it's one of those dumb mp3 players but that was like a 10 dollar mp3 player it continues to loop and play and loop and play if you want the hydro wave to come back on you simply just flip the breaker and the system's back online so the hardwire system is slightly you know in terms of use it is slightly advantageous compared to the, the direct bluetooth but bluetooth is much more handier because the other wire tends to get caught up in these edges and i have had it been cut a couple times so so that's the downside of it but but other than that that's the wiring so if you have any questions then let me know and i'll try to explain uh what i know what i've done throughout the years and uh let's see this thing work oh yeah, yeah on the on the on this thing so on this thing uh this is the volume control this is volume control on the uh on the amp for me, uh, on my Pro Angler, this actually fell off. Actually, you know, I don't even think you need to need to install this. I believe if you don't install this, it either goes to full max or it stays at medium volume. So for my Pro Angler, actually, I didn't even, I think I, over the years, it got drowned in water and this thing actually failed and I just pulled that off and uh, it works fine. So then you just have one volume control and that volume control is done on the phone as demoed before and it works great via bluetooth and via you know uh the uh, traditional connector as well so you know worries about that but if i had to tell you where to put it on i say put it on max and then stash all that in here don't worry about it and then just use the uh use the actual uh mp3 player or phone or whatever you're using to just regulate the volume up and down and that's it that's pretty much the uh the hydrowave system like i said Speakers over there, everything's running underneath the kayak. I still gotta mount that and I'll show you guys the final product, right? Okay, let's do the final run through. 
So this is the kayak. The seat's sitting over there. Right there. Just so that I can show you where things are at. Um, we got a battery. We got amplifier. We got the wiring harness. The K harness. Let me know if you guys are interested in K harness. Just PM me, DM me, when we can talk. The speaker's installed there. Comes up here, goes through there. Go right back to the breakers, into the, actually that goes into the app, app goes into the breaker, and everything else is Bluetooth. So, let's turn it on. On. Maybe my Bluetooth's already automatically connected. Let's see. Yep, since so it's already on there, the, the Pylee amplifier, if it's not, you can always go to Bluetooth and then click it. Pile the amplifier is connected. Let's go play some music. Oh yeah. It's pretty loud, so if the fish ain't biting, you can also play your favorite music as well. That's always a good deal. And let's uh, let's play some fish sounds. Two cents. Feeding Frenzy 3030. There you go. Turn it up. There you go. That's the finished product. Hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, everything you need to buy to do this project will be in the video description. The speakers, the amplifiers, and if you need the files, uh, just DM me. We can talk about the files. Uh, but yep, that's the DIY, guys. And I think I think the speaker was the most expensive one. I think the amplifier was fifty bucks. So for about 150, about 150, you got yourself a Hydrowave, man. Ain't you know, awesome. I think Hydrowaves go for about 450 bucks right now. So they're pretty, they're pretty pricey. So just build yourself one. Turn that off. Turn the shop off. It's time to go home. It's late. It's past midnight probably.